today we're going to do a carrot. I'm really excited about the carrot. Last night we did a watercolors class with Megan Sawyer. She's a local artist in the area and she, um, she, she, you know how I recommend doing uh, a color chart with your paints? Well, I love that idea. And we were doing geraniums and she suggested that you do your color chart of your reds and your pinks. So I did that. I did all my reds and pinks that I have. And I really like this because it's a great way to see some of the colors look close some of them don't, but it really shows you what's more pink and what's more red. And then the two blues that she uses in her painting are these two bright blues and they're beautiful. I love them. So I thought, oh, this is kind of neat to see how pretty the blues go with the pinks and with the reds. Aren't they beautiful? Hi, Terry. Thank you for joining me. I'm so happy to have you guys with me. I'm hoping you're getting your paints out and you're getting ready. I'm just talking a little bit about um, some of the things that we've been doing in the studio um, and I did want to talk about just quickly, there is, are two kinds of papers. There's a cold press paper and there is a hot press paper. And the cold press paper is very bumpy and it absorbs the water. It absorbs the paint really well. It's, it's really nice to paint on. And the hot pressed is really smooth, which is really nice too. One of my favorite artists, she uses hot press. The water can push around quite a bit. Um, so you've got texture that'll soak in the water in the paint, and then you've got smooth that's called hot press. If you look at your watercolor paper right now, you will see where it says on the outside uh, down here, it'll say like, how many pounds your paper is. And usually we paint with a uh, watercolor that is 140 pounds. And it'll say, um, yeah, the weight and then the size. And this is mixed media watercolor paper. So I like it mixed media because you can use it for watercolor, you can use it for pen and pencil, you can use it for paint. But when you're doing watercolors itself, it's really nice to have a watercolor paper. Um, I'm just checking, I think the there's getting a little bit of flashback on the screen. All right, so here we're gonna do a carrot today. Um, I'm gonna draw the carrot. It's gonna be a long one, I'm going sideways. Um, while you guys are working with me, remember we talked about sketching. This is a nice, easy one to sketch. You've got a little bit of a cap here. And this is an oval shape. And then the, the carrot comes down because what's coming out of in the center will be the green that's usually buried above the ground. I could turn my paper this way, <laughs> which is what most, most of the time you're looking at carrots. It has these little divot, divots in here and it's kind of rounded. So sometimes when you're drawing, you might want to indicate those divots divots but you really don't want to draw hard with your pencil when we're doing the sketch that we're actually going to paint because again we don't want that pencil necessarily to show through uh you will we will be doing a little bit of shading on this side to show when we're uh, going to be painting we're going to do some shading there so here i'm going to go ahead and start with my um the main carrot that i want to paint this this carrot's gonna have the rounded top here. It's a little bit of an oval shape. I'm doing it really lightly. I'm gonna draw it like this so that you can see me with my hand not being in the way. I'm gonna go really lightly here and it's gonna come down to a point um, and then come back up and it's rounded at the edges because carrots are kind of rounded and bulbous at the top. And the way to show that is this round. The green is gonna come out from there. There's several ways to do the green but for right now, we're just gonna pull those out. I love it when your paintings go off the page. I'm gonna show you how to paint this, but I'm hoping that when you post on Art Yourself Studio, and you can just post to the Art Yourself to Studio page. I did not, I got rid of that other group because it was too confusing and just post to the page so I can see it. 
uh, I'm offering these free classes and not asking for donations, not asking for any money. And so really the way I get paid is when I see the joy and I see what you guys are painting with me. So if you do, please post it. I love to see it. Um, you can also make comments. Give me some thumbs up if you're happy with what's going on. I won't. Um, if, if it's not live, go ahead and still make comments because I will see the comments. So here we go with the cadmium. I'm going to use that cadmium yellow that I really like. Let's see if I, I wish I, oh, here, wait, maybe this will work. Okay, there's cadmium yellow is this warmer yellow. I think especially since our carrot is orange, this is a really good yellow to use. Uh, I've got the two waters over here. I'm not sure it's showing up in the thing. Oh, I can put them over here. So you can see the wet, the dirty water and the clean water. And um, so we have the cadmium yellow, and then there's a little bit of this uh, yellow ochre, which is a nice one to use. Um, and then let's get my pencil and pens here out of the way. Okay, and um, the next color is gonna be, so you've got that, then you've got the orange. You might have a pure orange, or you might wanna make your orange, you can make it. Does anybody know how to make orange? <laughs> I'd love the kids to learn that the way to make some of these colors. If you don't have orange in your palette, you can do a little bit of a red. I'm gonna put some red here and then add some of the yellow to it. And then you can make a really nice orange. Sometimes it makes your painting interesting too. Look at that orange. You can change the, the value and the texture of the orange by uh, if I wanted to add more red to it, I could and make it a deeper orange or if I wanted to add more yellow to it and make it a lighter orange which is kind of fun because when you're painting your own painting you definitely can have fun with that like you'll, ha you'll have fun with all the different um, levels of orange you can get but we're going to do these three layers then we will take a little bit of red here to add for some highlighting I may even add a little bit of purple in that red down here to make it for the highlight, the low, the dark part of it. That's pretty dark. We won't use it that dark, but go ahead and write it down. Take notes. Today is the 23rd. This is our lesson number seven, I believe. And, and you have the date on it and we're doing a carrot. So let's start with the light wash of the cadmium. And a light wash is just taking your color. That was a lot of color. So I'm washing it out in my water. And I'm gonna just spread that. Instead of grabbing more paint, I'm just gonna spread that around. Go ahead and fill that whole thing in. See how lighter it is now that we are spreading it? I love when you get a little darker edge up here of the color, like when it shows on the edge. I think that's kind of cool. The center is gonna be the rounded part, so just take up some of that you can. That's good too. Hi, Lillian, how are you? Glad you're here today. Um, let's see if I have extra water I don't okay so I'm supposed to have a clean water and a dirty water but I just as I said I finished my watercolor lesson and um, this is cleaner and this is dirtiest <laughs> so um, I didn't have a chance to change that out I'm letting that dry we'll probably do a little bit of the yellow here here and here I don't know if you've noticed but when your paper's wet, you don't want to use your eraser on it. It, it. it will just make your paper dirty. So just let it be wet, let it, let it dry. Don't worry about the pencil lines. The next layer we're gonna do is this yellow ochre. And with the yellow ochre, I'm gonna do a little wet. It's still a little damp, it's got a nice sheen to it. So I'm gonna do a little wet on, on wet. It's not too wet because it'll get uh, too, too many blooms, but it is wet enough that I can push the paint around. I'd love to leave some of that lighter yellow in there. And I do have a few blooms here, which I really think is kind of pretty. I hope you like it. Um, we can take this light, the, this is the yellow green, which is really green. <laughs> Um, we'll put a little cadmium yellow in front of it because we should mix that up and I want the warm orange yellow to warm that green up. If you take green, I'm going to put a little green here and you mat and you mix in some of the yellow ochre. 
and you put a dab in there, that makes a sap green. Uh, that's a very popular color. If I added a little blue to it or a little brown to it, it would turn more of an olive green, but that's a um, sap green, which is kind of nice for our, uh, varied green levels. Uh, another way to get a nice green, a rich green, is if you put that green in there, and then if you added red directly to it, if we added red to it, look at how nice that is. That's a complementary color, and it just makes a really nice deep, deep green. It's a good um, for that last layer to get the details. If I put a third color in there, it would turn in more brown. So we don't want to do that. If you get three colors on the complementary color wheel, they'll it'll be brown. So you really don't want to do that. Be careful with that. Um, okay, so this is kind of dry. Now I'm going to take that orange, and it's bright orange. It's a really bright orange. I'm going to drop it in as well. I probably will scoop some up. But we're just going to see how I'm tapping it in. It just is going to add some interest and texture. It's just adding interest, texture. We want to show some roundness in the in the orange. So after the next layer, we'll be doing a little bit of a shading. So on the edges, so that it shades. I'm picking up a little bit of water and dropping it in. Even if I'm using the dirty water, that's okay. It takes a little bit out of the uh, brightness of that orange. Carrots are pretty bright. They're pretty orange. When I think of a carrot, when I was a kid, we used to play in the neighborhood. Of course, you did back then. You could go everywhere. Not that it was that long ago. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. Hi, Tina. How are you? Welcome. Glad to have you joining us. Um, we used to walk the neighborhood, and there was one there was uh, one lot, empty lot between two houses. And we would walk on it, and there were these green things sticking up. And we, we were curious, and we said, let's see what it is. And sure enough, it were they were. It was. They were carrots. We pulled it up and they were white carrots. So we thought, oh boy, we better not eat these because they need some time to turn orange. So we took them home to our moms and our moms told us what to do with them. And we were so uh, adventurous that day. <laughs> it was fun seeing how the carrots looked. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take a little blue, even though I didn't have it in there. I'm gonna put a little blue down in here with that orange because I want it to be the deepness, the deep part of that, where the carrots are attaching to the top of this carrot. And it's adding a little bit. Some carrots, you can see that little line that goes across. I'd love just to just to give a hint of it by putting it in with your um, one of these greens, probably this darker green. Just give it a hint. It's washed, it's still wet, so they're kind of blurring in a little bit, so that's good. Only on the edge. You don't want to go straight across. If you go straight across, your carrot will look flat. So if you just put it on the edge and pull it over with a little bit of a curve. To me, I'm looking at that that bright orange and I'm saying I feel like it needs some more detail. So I'm going to just put some more drops, but I'm going to put some red in there. I want to have a little bit more interest in it. So the red's going to be on the edge. If I want to really go, remember that purple, really go dark on the edge, I can add some purple just along the very, very edge. Add a little purple. It's so fun. And you guys, these are your carrots. So if you want to do anything different than what I'm doing, please do. And then post it. I'd love to see it. Um, this is what's so fun about watercolors. You let it bleed and you let it move. And it, it's just fun to watch and see all the different things that you can do with it. Let me, if you get too much in a spot and you want to pick it up, hi, Tina, how are you? How's it going? Are you getting some more painting in? Um, if you want to, like, it's wet there. I love that that little bit of yellow is showing through. But let, let me say I got too much red there and I want to pick it up a little bit. I push my brush along the wet paint and I can dry it off. I can push it and pick it up. But I really did like that orange that was in there. So, um... I, I uh, am going to put some more back in. 
And here I did choose purple. It's a purple or violet, Maloney. Is that is that what you're asking? I mixed that in with the with the red. You, I think earlier I did a blue. I took some of this green and that blue. And the reason why I did that for in here is because you really like to make your painting. I don't know. I guess I say cohesive. So I know I'm going to use the green, these greens in the green part of the carrot. So I want to make sure that I have some down in here and the green and the green with the blue in it will be good to come down in here. Uh, so that's why, but I love this red and the purple mixture as well. I think it just adds, it's kind of a nice surprise. I think when people look at your carrot and they'll question it, they'll, they'll see, you know, why, what is this going on? Um, wait, what did you say? Pat, Pat, you're angry. You did you make a mistake or <laughs> don't worry if you make a mistake. This is really just for fun and play. So if you just make a mistake, don't worry. Just paint it again. It's fun. Um, I see here. I need a little more detail in that. So I might use a um, a nice pink, a hot pink in there. Um, hi, Susan. I'm so glad you could join us. I miss you. I hope you're doing good today. Um, I was just telling him how I'm talking about the different colors that are in there. Look how exciting that carrot is. I'm going to try to get up close. Look at the different colors in there and how interesting it is. They say that if you, um, the longer a person looks at your painting, the more interested it is, more interesting. And you want them, you want them to look at your painting as long as they can, you know, they'll, they'll stare at it. And I think something like this has enough uh, different colors in it that it is interesting. If people want to know, I'm going to turn off this light because I think that's coming back on the thing, coming back on the screen. I think that's better. Um, yeah, you want them to stare at your painting and, and really say, well, why does this look so cool? And it's probably because you've got a lot of texture. A lot of people draw this straight line across. You can't, You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you don't get in that habit. Um, let's play with the re the uh, the leafy part of the carrot. How about my sister in law? You can tell me what that's called. I bet you know. It's kind of fern like. <laughs> um, I, I'm putting my finger down. Let's see if I can do this so that my hand's not in the way. I'm putting my finger down and I'm just dragging lightly across to make a nice thin line. You can press and push and make a fat line if you want. I like to start out with a thin line, really thin line. And they're all coming from the same little circle inside your carrot which is different when you're painting reeds on a beach or grass because they all come from a, a different spot in your painting. I'm going to put a little loop around that because I want that to really show that it's coming from the same area. And I think that helps with making it a little rounded on the edges here. I'm pulling some of this color down to kind of round it out. There might be a little light highlight here in this top there. Now we're getting kind of picky, but um, take some of this green and then at the tips, at the ends, you get to do all these little, these little lines. And I love it if your carrot goes off the page. Uh, think about how you can make this different. You can make this like your painting. Think about what you could do with these carrots. Could you paint a little bunny and have the carrots coming off out of the bunny's mouth? Wouldn't that be cute? Like you just caught him in the garden. Or maybe you'll paint the, the carrots in a basket that somebody's gone to the market and they've filled their basket with carrots and the carrots are spilling over the edge of the basket. It's, it's fine to do, like YouTube has tons of free watercolor classes, which are really wonderful. And you're really support, supporting, excuse me, supporting local artists. And it's, it, that's amazing. And it's, it's really nice to do. Uh, but you really wanna, I guess what I was gonna say, it's like, it's fine to copy and I'm taking some of that green and as I'm talking, I'm kind of putzering because I'd, I'd like to maybe show a little more detail in here. Um, and I'm using the green to kind of pull it all together because there's green on top and there's green down here. I might even take some of the red and put it up in that green. 
which would be interesting. But what I was gonna say is it's fine to copy. Uh, it's good to copy. If you copy, that's great. You can just give credit to the person that you copied. But what what takes you to the next stage is if you kind of use your own thoughts in what you're painting. And you can say, oh, I love that carrot. We did a carrot today and I got some details, I got some ideas, but maybe I'm gonna paint my own carrot and I'm gonna do my own thing with it. Um, I'm gonna turn it into, to, I'm gonna put it, like I said, with maybe with a bunny or make it your idea. Maybe, maybe the carrot's still in the ground. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, maybe it's underground and you, you just do, you do the carrot here. Let me see, you kind of come down here. That was the red. I'd like to do the layers, but maybe you just say, oh, I'm gonna do just a portion of the carrot and I wanna spend more time with uh, the green part of it. So I'm gonna do just a carrot that's still stuck in the ground and coming out here a little bit fatter. And then, um, I don't know, have a bunny there. Maybe you got a bunny nose in the picture. Let's see if I could get that green going. I love when the, the paintings go off the page. I just think that's exciting. Plus this little bit of detail. Now that, that's a lot of just plain green. I don't know if you guys see it or if you agree. So if, if I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting or to remember to keep how we talked about keeping the, the attention of the viewer, if I wanted to keep the attention of the viewer, I might plop a little blue in there or some of that red in the green up here and just uh, tap it in there and let it bleed a bit, let it kind of come down here and look like it's going into the water. And oh, let's do a little up there. The, the main important thing is not to uh, repeat the same thing over and over and over on your painting. If you, if you repeat it, it just gets a little bit boring. Oh, I just dipped into this crimson, the Ziller and Crimson, and I just put it on by itself right there. Isn't that pretty? I like how the, um, the yellow shows through. Now, to me, it looks like a straight stick. So I might say, well, gosh, maybe I want a little fatter up here so that it tapers down. So I grab some red and I think I'll grab some orange and make sure it tapers this way. Kind of fun that way, isn't it? Kind of fun. And sometimes I really like it. I'm like on my puppy portraits. <laughs> I really like to um, do this. I take the color. I'm going to use an opposite color. I'm going to use a pretty teal blue. Get some water, splash it in. How are we doing on time? Oh, good. We got time. I didn't want to keep it too long. And I'm just going to splash it on top. Give it a little bit of a background. Isn't that kind of fun? And maybe just for the hay, that pretty orange with the little red and just splat that down there. And then of course you have to sign it. You have to sign your work. And if you could post it, on my Facebook page. I would love to see it. It's uh, Art Yourself Studio. I would love to see it. If you're interested in some of the um, materials I use, it's on my website under classes. Not the classes that's in the middle of the page, but it's under the, on the side, the sidebars on the um, left-hand side of the screen. There'll be a classes and then materials used in classes. I might make that button a little easier to see, but if you go to that page, you can see some of the materials that we're using, that I'm using here today. Um, this is fun. I'm gonna take some of that out. I don't, I didn't like that. When I'm looking at the camera, I didn't like it just a blob, but that is really pretty. Let's get some more orange in there and brighten it up a little bit. Now that it's starting to dry, could even put a little yellow in there. Tell me what you did. What's your favorite part? Any questions? Go ahead and ask me a question down here and I will check the comments. I will answer your questions. I'll keep these live for a couple days and then, and then they go down. So um, if you wanna share it with some friends, I'd love you to share it. It's fun, it's fun. I'll let you, um, come here, honey. Come on out. You wanna say goodbye to everybody? Come on, come on, little chicken. I was talking at the beginning about the lesson I had today it was on the on our bird and I bring the bird into the studio when we study the bird. How how are your carrots looking? I don't think you can post it in this feed right away, but when this feed is done, you can go to Art Yourself Studio and you can post your pictures. 
I hope I've given you enough time and motivation and you can do fat carrots, skinny carrots. Um, it'd be kind of fun to do even off color carrots. You could, what if you did blue carrots and you know, like a red uh, leaves coming out of it? Um, the stalk, I guess. I'm not sure what it's called. But um, yeah, I'd love to see what you have. I thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you joining me. And I hope to see you next Tuesday. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do, but join me Tuesday and we will uh, paint again. Thank you. Bye.